of Jesus. Tonight, Lord, you are ministering to your people. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you will use our men of God tonight as your instrument, as your vessel, Lord God, to speak your word for the clarity and simplicity. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this place. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Have your way, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, you may have received in the presence of the Lord. Glory to his holy name. Amen. To... You know, it's so wonderful to serve the Lord. And, you know, some people will say, well, it's not easy to obey God. But the scripture says when we abide in him and he abides in us, we become one. And if we become one with the Lord, it's very easy to serve in the Lord. And it's uh, such a privilege and honor because he found us when we was deep in our sins. But because of his mercy, his grace, his love for his people, for us, we came from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Well, and someone was saying, well, I didn't sin. I was not alcoholic. I was not a drug user. I lived clean and moral life and so on and so forth. But without Jesus, we all sinners. For God so much to love the world that he gave his only begotten son. And so when we accept him, when we recognize what <coughs> Jesus has done for us on our cross, we step in from darkness to the light. And we inherit the eternal, eternal life. Hallelujah. That is the good news. Amen. Amen to that. Well, we have uh, some announcement that we have uh, next week on August 10th, we have our <coughs> annual park picnic. So we also posted this announcement on our website, and you can see that at, um, on our website with the announcement section, and also uh, present to you the address, how to get there if you are in this area, in Sacramento area. We would love to see you and fellowship with you. And like Pastor says, it's not just going to be a fellowship of the believer, which is it's a tremendous time, <coughs> very, very needed time when we come together as the believer. Because Scripture was saying that iron, iron sharp iron. So when we come together, we sharp each other, we share with each other different testimonies, our lives. What is Lord doing in our lives and so on? Victories, what we overcome uh, in our lives and how we receive that victories, what Jesus doing in each of our lives. So also pastor will minister at the park in Augustine. And so we're going to look forward to this time. So it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time in the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, right now, Pastor is going to come in just a few minutes. Um, but in the meantime, I would like to continue to lift up a certain prayer request. We received some prayer requests on our, our website. And those who may be watching this broadcast, and you also have a prayer request. You can also go to the prayer request um, section of the our website and posted your uh, prayer request. Okay, so we uh, faithfully continue to pray for the needs of the people. So, and I want to lift them uh, right now that uh, that needs. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify your holy name. We lift them to you, Lord God, every prayer request, every need of the people, those who is in our prayer uh, box and also the God who is posted the request on the website 
and send it, uh, a different request to us. Lord, we lift them to you, Lord God. Every individual, every prayer request, you know every person's name and every person's need. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that, Father, every work of the devil in the name of Jesus has been canceled over your people in the name of Jesus. Father, those who need the new jobs, those who need the new positions in their lives, we also, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you move in the hearts and the lives of the people, that, Lord, that you will open the doors that no man or devil in hell will be able to close, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, and those, Lord God, who need a healing in their bodies, Lord, specifically those who send us the text messages, Lord, with a healing for the loved ones. We pray, Lord God, for the supernatural miracles will manifest in the lives of your people, Lord God. Lord Jesus, we know that you are the healer. And Father, we also, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, asking for the salvation of the loved ones. Every prayer request who needs salvation, who has to be saved, we claim their souls for the kingdom of the living God. We pray, Lord God, for every uh, family member, every child, every grandchild, every relative, everyone who we know and keep contact with. Father, we ask you, Lord God, save their souls. Deliver them from evil in the name of Jesus. Take the blinds off of them, spiritual eyes in the name of Jesus. They will know the truth, and the truth will set them free. And again, Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over your people. We cancel attacks of the devil and the plans of the enemy over your people. And Father, we release your will and we release your plan in your people's lives. And we also, Father, lift them to you, Lord God, our man of God, our pastor, Lord God, and those opportunities, Father, that you are placed before him, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that he is your sheep. He hears your voice and he follows your direction. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that he also follow direction and those opportunities, those doors, Lord God, that you, Lord God, already direct and place before him, Father. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, every person, Father, every partner, every supporter who is the part of this ministry, who support financially, and faithfully, Lord God, this ministry. We, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you will return in abundance in Jesus' name. As they gave, Lord God, that you will give unto them, Lord God, good measure, pressed down, shaken together. And, Father, we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, Lord, and we give you glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, now pastor is coming. Amen. Amen. Glory. How are you all doing today? Oh, yes. Are you really blessed? Yes. I tell you what, this is a good day to be blessed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every day is a good day to be blessed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I want to thank all y'all for joining us tonight, and I want you to know that God is on the throne, and he's high and lifted up, and a train still fills the temple. And our love who still stands to surfing, but when they will cover their feet, but when they cover their feet, but when they do fly. <laughs> Amen. So, so this is a, this is not a something that we can have anything to do about. We just have to just rejoice at this time because God is still on the throne. Hallelujah. Thank you for that, Lord God. Amen. Amen. I want to thank all y'all for joining us. Uh, it's, it's been a wonderful day. I've had uh, a lot of. Uh, I covered a lot of ground today. Amen. And then uh, I have a, we're, we're dealing with a message this week on, on Wednesday nights that's going to really help us to see what God is saying. Amen. Amen. And uh, I want you all to just buckle up and put your seatbelt on and let's go it forward. Amen. Amen. I would like to sing a song before I, before I uh, get into the word today. Amen. Amen. It's just a song that, been, you know, just came up in my spirit today. I hadn't sung this song in a good while, but I want to sing it right now. And I think it's in the play right there. Uh, so let me. 
Let me pray first before we turn it on, please. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. Praise you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, I just thank you this evening, Lord God. I thank you for your mighty hand. Continue to rest upon us. Thank you, Father, that you're leading us and you're guiding us in all truth and you've shown us things to come. Thank you, Father, for divine instructions and direction, Father, that you're calling us to begin to focus. God, I thank you that you're shifting things around in the spirit realm. And you're causing things to come about, Father, things that you've shown us in our spirit, Lord God. Now you're bringing them to pass. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we are living in a time of unveiling and revelation knowledge that is flowing freely to help us, to, to empower us, to, to walk in this day and hour which we're in. God, we will not grow weary in well-doing because we know that in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So God, we look not to our own understanding, but we look to you with all our heart. And we trust you, Lord God, that you will bring us to that place where your name will be glorified in and through everything that we do and that we attempt to do for the sake of the gospel. In Jesus' name, we bless you now. Amen and amen. Welcome to New Life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. You know, God is unfolding. He's revealing. He's showing some things. And to something that God showed me a while back uh, is about to come to pass. It's about to come to pass. Amen. I had a vision. I was riding down the road and I had an open vision and I saw thousands of people out in front of me and I'm standing up on this platform and I'm preaching the gospel and the power of God was falling and people being healed, people being delivered and the devil's just running out of people because of the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I said, oh God, when is, you know, I, I, now I'm about to see that come to pass. I'm about to see that come to pass. Amen. Because I'm, I'm about to go to a place where it's going it's, it's, it's to, going, I believe I have the opportunity to see that. I believe I'm going to have the opportunity to see that. No, I was in Nigeria. Yeah. And, I, and uh, so we're going we're gonna to be, we're going to obey God. So we're going to we'll believe in God right now. That by the second about the fifth of uh, what what day, huh? September. Fifth of September through the fourteenth of September. Amen. That's what we believe for. My wife said, "I want to go." I said, "No, honey, you got to stay here. <laughs> you got to stay here and, and handle the business here." Amen. But this is one thing I know God has called me to do, and this is what I know that He's leading me to do. I wouldn't be considered going if I know God wasn't in it, but I know God is in it. Amen. And so we already checking on the price of the tickets and everything, and we're getting everything lined up. I know, I'm locating my passport and everything. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Amen. But right now I want to sing a song, uh, Lost in His Presence. Amen. Amen. I had lost 
No, I'm just lost in the present of the sweet Holy Ghost. I'm just lost in the present of the sweet Holy Ghost. And he's drawing me closer to the one I love the most. And I'm keeping company with the heavenly host. Cause I'm lost in the presence of the sweet Holy Ghost. If you tried to tell me something and I just misunderstood, if I'm too heavenly minded to be any earthly good, and if you scared of my religion, then you better not get too close, cause I'm lost in the presence of the sweet Holy Ghost. Oh, I'm just lost in the presence of the sweet Holy Ghost, and he's drawing me closer to the one I love the most, and I'm keeping company with the heavenly host, cause I'm lost in the presence of the sweet Holy Ghost If you think I'm out of order Cause I can't stay in my seat If you think that it's blasphemy Cause they're dancing in my feet I can't hardly hear you talking And I'm not listening very well Because I'm plugged into the power And I'm about to have a spell I'm just lost in the presence Of the sweet Holy Ghost And he's drawing me closer To the one I love the most And I'm keeping company With the heavenly host Cause I'm lost in the presence Of the sweet Holy Ghost in the presence of the sweet Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. I hadn't sung that song in a long time. Amen. That's amen. your first time hearing it. Your first time ever hearing it? Yeah. Oh, good. Amen. amen. And so it's just, it's new to you then, huh? Yeah, it's brand new. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, still, it's still new to a lot of people because a lot of people never heard that song. You're absolutely right. Who but sang it? it? Yahweh? No, uh, that's someone else. I don't know who really sang that, but uh, right now, Larry's singing. Amen. Pastor Larry's singing, right? <laughs> amen, amen. Well, we've been dealing with the area on, Sarah, on Wednesday nights talking about what? Anybody remember? Huh? Taking the power of God's word to the world. My God, you know what? This right on time. <laughs> this is what we're teaching. This is what God is doing with my heart about. Amen. Now look at this. It's just, it's just a coincidence of what? <laughs> taking God's healing, taking God's power to the world. Amen. Amen. And then there was something else we put on there. From the standpoint of knowing. Taking God's power to the world from the standpoint of knowing. Amen. And so that's where we that's where we at today. Glory to God. Taking God's power to the world from the standpoint of knowing. Knowing what? Knowing that you are not alone. Knowing, knowing your position of power it, and Yeah, knowing your position. It's a place of a power and authority. Amen. You know, I, I, I looked at that area, and I thought about something, you know. And uh, and when I looked at it, I, I began to see the, 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 the I guess you might call it the, the revelation of this message. Because taking God's word, taking God's power to the world, from a position of knowing, is like showing, like telling us, we have to know our position. 
Amen. Because to go to the world with the power of God, you have to understand that you are not going as a mere man. Amen. You're going as a representative of the kingdom of God. Amen. An ambassador of the kingdom of God. Amen. And so looking at that, I, I began to look at some scriptures today because, see, when you talk about, when you talk about, uh, of uh, knowing the position, you see, Jesus, he understood his position. And he, as he endured and, and ministered, and as he uh, was received into heaven, he was received in his position, the place of authority and power. Amen. And the Bible also said that we are caught up with him and seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, if we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, and Jesus is sitting in the position of authority, and now God has given him the power to, to, to distribute it to whom he will, guess what? We are seated now in the place of authority. This is our position now. Amen. Amen. And so when I begin to, you know, look at scriptures and, 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 and talk, you know, think about what, what about all this, what God is saying, I began to see something very significant in the study of the Word. I want you to turn your Bible to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. And I know we've been starting, we've been going, we've been starting from a different scripture. We will hit at that. We will, we will hit on how we begin the scripture in a minute. But right now, this is in my spirit, and I believe this is where I need to start right now. Amen. So, in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, amen, we'll see that it says here in verse number 2, it said, Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit of now working in church of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation time past. In the lust of, the, of, the, of our flesh, fulfilled the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature church around, even as others. But God, verse 4, Ephesians 2, verse 4, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us together, and I like this right here, in Christ. In Christ. Amen. Amen. Quicken us together in Christ. By grace ye are saved. Now I like verse 6 even more. Because it shows us our position. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, we need, we need to have a, a knowing in our heart about this position. Not just reading about it. We need to have a knowing in our heart that this is our position as a child of God. Amen. Amen. And had raised us up together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And have made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Oh, oh, my friend, if you could just get a hold of that. If you could just get a hold of that place right there. You see, when I'm looking at, I look at this, this pulpit as a, as a, you see, as a throne. When I was when 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 I was uh, uh, in church service uh, one time and and the preacher that was up there preaching he was pressing across back and forth across the floor he said I this and I this and and this and, and I this and I did this and I'm doing this and I did all this and and I, and it was grieving my spirit because it was more man than it was God and God spoke to me said get your eyes off of man. God literally spoke to me and said, get your eyes off man. And when I, I, and I, and I just, I didn't know what to do. I just closed my eyes. <laughs> I, just, I said, okay. I just closed my eyes. And when I closed my eyes, I was in heaven. I was in heaven, and I was at the big throne that the Bible tells us of in the book of Isaiah chapter 6. I was there at the big throne, and it was high. And down, and here I am standing at the foot of the at the foot of the throne, a real small thing compared to this big throne. 
And this big throne was something like this right here. It was so big, so high, and, and, and it was so, it was, and, and the glory of God was all in this place. Amen. The glory of God was all in this place. And so, and so God told me to get my eyes off of men. So I took my eyes off of men, and I began to just, just uh, sit there, and I began to weep. I began to weep, and I began to weep, because now, oh my God. Oh, I'm just talking about it, and I can see it just like I, it just happened today. Amen. And I'm just weeping in the presence of the Lord. And I'm just weeping and weeping. Then all of a sudden, I come out of this vision, and the people around me, they were so, because I was in, 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 in such a presence of God, they was around me, and they were, and they were, they was feeling it. And so, when I opened up my eyes, it was about the sermon. The, the service was almost over with, but I was just sitting there weeping, weeping, in the presence of the Lord. And boy, I tell you, that throne that I saw, it was shaped like this, but it was high. And him that sat on the throne, I couldn't see him, but I saw the hands. Because it was just like it was. I saw the hands. I couldn't see the face, but I saw the hands. And, and when I saw that, I began to, I began to under, God gave me an understanding about the, the power and authority that it represents. He began to deal with my heart about the authority and the power that it represents. Amen. And so I began to understand more about divine authority. And so I began to I began to read up on divine authority. Brother Kieran Hagen was a, 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 a good teacher on divine authority. And uh and uh, and uh, this Chinaman, Lee, he was also a good teacher on, on authority. Amen. And so I, I began to take these books. And I began to read all this stuff I could find on authority. And so much that I began to preach and teach it everywhere I go. Amen. I was, my, I was getting so, I was so full of it. I was so full of it. And when I preach it, when I teach it, I mean, I mean, it will, it will bring about great results. There were signs, wonders, and miracles. And I'm telling you, because of the authority. When you understand your position, when you understand your place in Christ, you know that you are in a position of authority. You're in a position of power. Amen? Because when you're walking the way God has called you to walk, you're going to walk in Him and not, and, and you know, and you, and when you are in Him, I'm telling you, you got everything you need to accomplish whatever He's asked of you to accomplish. Amen? You have everything that you need because, you're, because your life is hid in Him. Amen? So I begin to understand the place of authority. I begin to understand it. Amen. I want you to turn to, you already right there, but, uh, uh, chapter 1. Chapter 1. And let's look at verse number 17. Chapter 1, verse number 17. That God, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of, what the hope of his calling and what is the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us work, who believe according to the workings of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead? And notice what he said. And sit him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Amen. So Jesus is seated at the right hand in heavenly places. Amen. Now the Bible said we've been caught up and seated in Christ Jesus. So if Jesus in the right hand, of, if he's seated at the right hand in heavenly places, then where are you seated as a child of God? Where are you seated as a child of God? See, when I look at this throne, I see God sitting right here. God is sitting right here on the throne. And now that Jesus had done his work on earth in the, in the, in the humans, in the, in, from the humans, uh, from a natural standpoint and the spiritual standpoint, now he's, he's, he's seated 
at the right hand of the Father. So if this is the Father throne, now guess what? The Son got him, he got his throne right beside his Father. Amen. Amen. He got his throne right beside his Father. See, see, how, how did that happen? The Father delegated the power and authority over to the Son. Amen. Amen. Now, as the Father has dedicated the power and authority over to the Son, now he has placed, he has placed the, all, all the things of the church and of the body under his feet. Amen. It's all under Jesus' feet now. Mm -hmm. But now, but now that we have become children of God, now that God is on the throne, and Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father on the throne, the place of position, the position of power and authority, amen, now we are caught up in him, and you know, you know, we are, well, you know our position is now, we are on the right hand of him. Amen. So we, as the body of Christ, has been given the position of power and authority to do what? To go to the world with the gospel uh, uh, demonstrating the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. To demonstrate the kingdom of God. So God is calling us. Amen. And I began to think about this. I said, Lord, the right hand. And that right hand, that, that right, the word right hand spoke real loud to me. Amen. And so I began to look it up. I began to look up some, some, uh, 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 some, some scriptures along the line. I want you to turn to Psalms 110. Psalms 110. Because we are, we See, God has set us in a place of, 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 of authority. Before we go to Psalm 110 first, let's go to Ephesians again. Excuse, excuse me. Ephesians chapter 14. Ephesians chapter 14. Amen. Before we go to, before we go to uh, uh, Psalms, let's go to Ephesians chapter 14. Oh, God, 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 God. John chapter 14. Talk about Ephesians chapter 14. I ain't no Ephesians would go 14. Yeah. <laughs> John chapter 14. Amen. In John chapter 14 chapter, I want you to look at verse number 12. John chapter 14, verse number 12. Are you there? Amen. Amen. Verse number 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Amen. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. I will do it. So when I begin to when I begin to understand that, it was after the Lord had brought me into heaven. It's when I begin to get revelation knowledge about what I'm sharing with you right now. Amen. God began to use me in a very powerful way because now, as He has showed me this, now He reveals to me verse ten. He reveals to me verse 10 and verse 11. Amen. Through this scripture, verse 12, he reveals to me and he brought to my understanding verse 10 and verse 11, which is very, very powerful. Amen. Very powerful. Which says, Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Verse 11 said, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. Now, God is showing us that in verse number 12, that he has, this is my license to go and do the work that God, that Jesus did in the earth. This is my license because he's telling me that the work that I do shall you do also, and great work to me shall you do because I go to my Father. Now, as I understand that, I begin to apply that very scripture in every message that I minister. Because now, I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm ministering from a standpoint of knowing. Of knowing what? Of knowing that I have been granted the permission to carry out or to walk in the same power, same authority, and the same faith that Jesus walked in. Amen. Amen. You see, when I come to that knowledge, now I don't have nothing to hinder me from walking the walk that God has called me to walk but me. And, and the, only way, the only way I can stop me is allow doubt and unbelief to override what God has shown me to be true. You understand what I'm saying? If you allow doubt and unbelief to override what God has shown you to be true, then the enemy has taken a stronghold and put over you to stop you from moving forward. Amen. So we have to understand what God is saying to us. See, God is in us. That means Jesus is in us. Amen. Amen. Jesus is in us for one purpose and for one purpose only. 
to carry out the gospel, to carry to carry forth that what he had begun. Amen. His portion was complete, but then he, in, in Acts in, in Matthew chapter twenty-eight, he delegated to the body. Now he's the head of the body, but now he is delegating the authority to the body that the body will continue in the work that he has begun. Hallelujah. Amen. So we see here, he said, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. Because you see, my words will never accomplish much in the earth. But when I use his words, when I use his words, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, to activate that which he has placed in my heart. Amen? By standing on the word. Standing on the word. Now, as I go to Psalms and one Psalm 110, as I go to Psalms 110, are you there? Or y'all have to go back and find it again? In Psalms 110, I find these words, and it says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Set thou at my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to his name. So we see that at the right hand, that's where we are. And the Lord has said to my Lord, Set thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. You see, when you begin to understand who you are, you 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 sit there at the right hand until he until and he said until I make thine enemy thy footstool. The psalm is the psalm is quite five. It, it, uh, uh, let's see here. It says it says the Lord shall send a rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemy. See, God is setting you as a rod. You are becoming as a an instrument in the hand of God to act to act out the will of God in the earth because you have become a lethal weapon in God's hand. And as you and as you speak the word, as you stand upon the promise of the word, your words is going to come out anointed and appointed with an assignment to bring about, mm -hmm. to come to pass. Because you're not acting in your strength. You're not acting in your will. He said, as you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done of you of my Father which is in heaven. So what you are asking, you're asking because he says, he tells us in, in verse number 10, in John chapter 14, verse 10, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father. See, you're not speaking your words. You're speaking the words of the Father, and the words of the Father is powerful. Yeah. And sharper than any to his sword. Yeah. According to Hebrew chapter 4 and verse 12. Amen? So the as we are speaking the word of God, we are speaking from a standpoint of a, of a knowing. Amen? What do you mean knowing? Knowing that I've been seated in the position of authority and power. Amen. When I know that I'm seated in the position of authority and power, then I'm not going to be hindered in doing what God has called me to do. I'm going to do it with confidence. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to do it with confidence. You see, you, there's no need to allow fear to come in. There's no need to allow doubt to come in. All, I'm, all, I'm, all I'm looking at is what God has said to me, and my job is not to look at what the, what the situation looks like. My job is to keep my eyes focused on him. Amen, amen. Because he's already run the race. Mm -hmm. He's already finished the course. Yes. He's already dominated and made a show of Satan openly and triumphant over them in it. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so I don't have to try to uh, establish another victory. He, the victory's already been won. I just walk in his victory. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I'm walking his victory. I'm standing in his footprints. He's not standing in mine. I'm standing in his. Amen. Amen. I'm not using my hands. I'm using his hands. Yeah. I'm not using my words. I'm using his words. Amen. His words are quick and powerful, not my words. Amen. Glory to God. Ah, Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when I understand, when I understand my position, I understand that God has placed me in a position of, of power and authority. Amen. Before he gave the disciples the, the commission to go, he gave them power and authority. Amen. Amen. He, gave, he gave them power and authority over all the devils. Yeah. Over all devils. Amen. So if he gave it to them over all devils, and you and you are a disciple today, then he has given to you over all devils. Amen. He has given you of all them. You, you want to see that in the Word? Let's turn to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Glory Amen. To Glory to God. Luke chapter 10. <clears throat> Verse 1. Glory to God. No, Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils to cure diseases. Amen. Yeah. You see, when we look, when we see this, we see that God is not just looking for someone to just say, I'm an anointed. No. God is looking for someone who will see himself the way Paul said. He said, what did Paul say? I come to you with not enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the Holy Ghost and demonstration. Amen. Amen. But in the Holy Ghost with demonstration. God is looking for someone that will demonstrate the word. Not just to speak the word, but to demonstrate the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, and this, is what, and this is what we're talking about. How are you going to take the word of God to the nations of the world if you are afraid to stand up and proclaim what Jesus has said? Amen. How can you cast out a devil when the devil looks at you and, 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 and he try, he, and he, and he, and he looks at you real strong too? <laughs> and all of a sudden you're, <laughs> how are you going to cast out a devil with fear? Fear is, 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 giving, is, is feeding that spirit. Fear is feeding that devil. Because the devil operates from the standpoint of fear. Amen? We operate from the standpoint of faith, not from fear. We walk by faith and not by sight. No matter what that thing looks like, it, it should not phase you. Amen. You should stand your ground from the position of authority and power, knowing your position. Amen. Amen. You got to know your position. If you're going to walk in the walk that God has called you to walk, if you're going to walk in the power, if you're going to walk in authority, you cannot do it not knowing who you are. You got to know who you are. It's a must. It's a must. Amen. Amen. It's a must. Because if you don't, if you're not sure of who you are in Christ, then the enemy, he's already aware of your of your of your faults. He's already aware that of your weaknesses in that area. He's waiting for you to come out, try to step out, try to demonstrate something that you're afraid to do. Amen. You be you be coming out there, you be coming out there like the sons of Stephen. Amen. And, and it's that Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? Amen. And the devil, the, the devil jumped on them boys and just beat them racket and almost killed them. But they ran away naked. They, they, they barely escaped with their lives. Hallelujah. See, you can't you can't attack no, you can't you can't address no devil, especially if you're going to them places like that. You can't you better know what you're doing. Amen. When I when I went to when I went to India. And ministered over there, I was not afraid. And I ministered. You know, I didn't even know that I was going to be ministering. When I went over there, they asked me the first, you know, I, I visited the church on a Sunday right before Passover week, too. Right before Passover week. And they said, and they found out that I was a, a minister and just came into, into the city, into the country. They said, What are you doing this week? I said, I'm just walking around checking out the same, checking out things. He said, How about being our minister for the week? I said, What? I said, Yes, sir. Amen. And during that week, over in my first week of, in India, I tell you there were many souls came to Christ. There were many, many signs and wonders brought. 
by the power of God. Why? Because I was in the right place at the right time. Not because I made up my mind to go on my own. It was because God sent me. Amen. God sent me. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling you, when God sent, sent you, you're going for a purpose and you're going for a reason. Amen. Amen. So you see that this, this song is quite a five, it's, it's quite five times. It quote, it quote five times in the this song that we read just read uh, 110, you, 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 you'll see it about five other times throughout the New Testament. Amen. Amen. Written in the New Testament. Amen. It takes it, it is a it is a key text in relation to our Lord mission here on earth. Amen. Glory to God. Now I, I want I want to take you, I want to show you something else in the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. Hallelujah. Amen. Exodus chapter 15. And I want you to look with me at verse number 6. Exodus chapter 15 and verse number 6. And it says, The right hand, thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in what? Power. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, had dashed in pieces the enemy. Amen. So we are the right hand. We as the body of Christ are his right hand. So if we are his right hand, then he said, thy right hand, O Lord, is what? Let me just read again. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. In power. You see, now, let me let me let me show you again. Because it seems like, it seems like uh, I need to uh, bring it back to your attention again. God is on the throne. This is God's throne. And at the right hand of God's throne is Jesus. Now, at the right hand of Jesus, there are the body of Christ. And he said, Thy right hand, O Lord. Is glorious in what? Power. power. So the power that God had, He gave it to the Son. Now the and the power that the Son had, He's given it to the church. So His glorious right hand is us. Hallelujah. We have been dedicated. We have been empowered by God Almighty through us, through His Son Jesus Christ. To go forth and to conquer the power or the kingdom of darkness of this world. Amen. 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 So, so your power and authority, Lord, have shattered the enemy. Amen. How does the enemy been shattered? Because we take a stand on the word of God. We take a stand and not and, and not and not allow ourselves to, to compromise. But we're taking a stand and we're standing our ground on what God has said. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, that made me want to tap dance. And I don't even know how to tap dance. <laughs> <laughs> I know all I know to do is jump up and down. Amen. But then now let's look at let's, let's look at Psalms again. Verse 16. Psalm 16 and verse 8, I mean. Psalm 16. I'm going to take y'all through a few scriptures today talking about the right hand because I'm telling you, you need to get a revelation about the right hand. Because you, you'll see that the right hand. You'll see that right hand. You'll see it in a place of power and authority. I'm telling you, when you get a revelation of that, you don't have to worry about no devil messing with you no more. Amen. Amen. You don't have to worry about no devil tormenting you no more when you understand your position. That's why when the devil tried to put sickness on me, when he tried to give me a headache or something, I said, devil, in the name of Jesus Christ, this is not coming from God. I know this is not something that I want to welcome on me. And I command you to take me in off me now. Amen. I will not receive no headache today. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 And then if you don't want to listen, I just, I just, I said, God, you said you anointed my hands to lay hands on the sick. Okay, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I command his headache to go now in Jesus' name. I don't want you. I don't need you. Now go. In the name of Jesus, go. And there you go. Amen. See, you got to learn how to take authority. And most of the time, the best place to practice on is yourself. Amen. Amen. The best place to practice on is yourself. Because that's where God began to reveal to me his, uh, the, the, the authority and the power of the word that I walk in. 
Because I began to, I had, I've had some experiences now. I've had several experiences. See, in, in, in uh, uh, Psalm 16, and some, oh, I haven't even turned there. I told y'all to turn I hadn't turned there. Mm -hmm. I guess I got to go there too, huh? Yeah. All right, then I'll do it just because y'all asked me to. Okay, Psalm 16, and look at verse number 8. He said, I have set the, I have set the Lord always before me. Notice what it said? I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my, what? Right, right hand. I shall not be moved. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory to God. You see, that's why it's so important that we meditate on the word. Because remember, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So how are we keeping the Lord before us today? By, by the word. Keeping the word before us. We will keep the Lord before us. And I'm telling you something, folks. It will begin to revolutionize your walk with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. So he said, I have set the Lord above always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh always shall rest in hope. Instead of resting in all those other things. <laughs> it, get, it has the opportunity now to rest in hope. Amen. Because the Lord is at my right hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. In other words, the, if the Lord is at my right hand, when I take a stand for the kingdom of God, when I reach out, it's not me reaching out. It's him reaching out through me. Hallelujah. It's him reaching out through me. It's his right hand. I am his right hand. You are his right hand. Glory to God. You too. <laughs> <laughs> you are his right hand. Amen. Amen. And then and then when I look at that, I look at uh, number verse number 18. Right, just look, you can just look right on over that verse number 18. And then we're going to look at verse number round, round about number 35, somewhere in that. Yeah. Right, 35, yeah. 35. Matthew, Psalms 18, 35. Oh. Psalms 1835. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy what? Salvation. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand had holding me up. And thy gentleness had made me great. You see, you thought you thought you was all of it because you, because you uh, had on them nice shoes. <laughs> no, your shoes had nothing to do with it. It was because of the Lord. He held you up and he made you great. He held you up with in the presence of in, in the face of your enemy. He did not allow you to be put to shame. He honored his word in the presence of the enemy and he held you up that you would be strong. And do great exploits in the presence of your enemy. Because the Bible tells us in, in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Find my brother. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Amen. So we are not standing in our own strength. We are not standing in our own ability. We are standing in the strength of his right hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so when I, when I, when I look at all this. I, I, I read this. I see what God is saying. You have, you, said, you gave me your, your shield of victory and your right hand sustained me. You stooped down to make me great. You see that translation? Amen. You stooped down to make me great. Amen. Your power and authority sustained me. Glory to God. Amen. See, God wants you to see yourself in a totally different way. See, how can we, how can we uh, uh, take the, how can we take the word of God to the nation and know our position and, and our position if we don't have an understanding where our position is? You see, uh, we, we say, well, I'm a Christian, I'm born again. Yeah, but you, but you got to understand, as a Christian, you've been seated in a, you have a different seating arrangement now. 
You have a different seated arrangement now. Yes, you're in this world, but you're not, this world is not your, it's not your throne. You've been seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, far above principalities and powers and might and dominion. And every name that is named, now it's all under your feet. Because you've been raised up above these things. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've been raised up above these things in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And then when you go on, when you go, when you when you when you begin, when you continue reading, look at Psalms 20. Psalms 20. Oh, Amen. Psalms 20. I like Psalms because Psalms give you a lot of information. Yeah. Psalms 20. Amen. Yeah. Psalms 20, verse number 20. There ain't no 20 verses in Psalms 20. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see y'all paying attention to me. <laughs> There's only nine verses in Psalms 20. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So in Psalms 20, and I want you to look at verse number 6. Psalms 20, and let's look at verse number 6. Amen. It says, now, and now know I that the Lord saveth me, saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. With the saving strength of his right hand. You see how much emphasis that we're seeing that God placed concerning on the right hand? Yes, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. The right hand is very important. Yes. You see, that's why, that's why, you know, even, even in the world standard, from the world standard, you know, uh, on on a business or, on a, or when the people two people have business and stuff like that, they partner up together. They say, "This is my right hand man." Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. you, you you ever heard people talk like that? Yes. Yes. You know why they talk like that? Because they have they have they have confidence that this man is going to own up to his part of the agreement. Mm -hmm. And this is the confidence that we must have in God yes. that as we become partners in Him with reaching this world. For the kingdom of God, we must be we must be assured that God is at our that that God is uh, that we we be in His right hand that He's going to hold up to His part of the bargain. Amen. Amen. He's going to hold up to what He has said. He's not going to ask us to do something. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden we get out there we we get out there out in the middle of no man's land mm -hmm. where there ain't nothing but demons. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden we we we're, we're the, abandoned by God. No, God is not going to abandon you. Amen. God said, I will be with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. 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 So we don't have to worry about God abandoning us. What we have to be concerned about is walking in obedience to him. Amen. Because the obedience is what releases, I'm telling you, you might not understand it, but your obedience to God, it, it helps you to walk in the power of God. Amen. Your obedience to God, it, it, it aids you in when you are walking to carry out the mission that God has given you, God looked at Abraham and called him his friend that he obeyed him so good. Oh, hallelujah. 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 And he was able to and he was able to communicate with God so much to the point that he changed God's mind concerning destroying some things. Oh, hallelujah. Now that was Moses, wasn't it? Both of them. Yeah, both of them. You're right. It was both of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So we see here, knowing that, now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. The Lord saves his anointed. Amen. See, he's talking about us. Amen. See, because now we are his anointed. Because the word is made, the word has become flesh on the inside of us now. Mm -hmm. When Jesus walked in the face of the earth, Jesus was looked upon as the anointed. Because he was the representative of the kingdom of God, showing the world something that the world had never seen before. The man of, oh my God, I'm feeling this thing, boy. Woo! Woo! Glory to God. It's all love for me. Hallelujah. Mm. Jesus walked this earth as the anointed one. Now, we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Now, everything that Jesus has is now ours. Mm. 
So we walk in that same. See, that's why, that's why we have his anointing, we have his authority, and we have his power. But that's not all. We have his faith. We have his faith, not our faith, because it's his life and nature on the inside of us that causes us to walk in victory. But you have to recognize that. Because we are seated in heaven in him. Are y'all getting anything out of this tonight? Amen. It's good. Woo. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. Oh my God, I feel tingling all over my head. <laughs> oh. oh my, 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 my. <laughs> Amen. So no, no, I listen, now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He answers him from his holy heaven with the saving strength. Of his right hand. Psalms 20, Psalms 20, verse 6. The saving strength of the power, the saving strength is his power and authority. Amen. Amen. We're talking about his power and authority. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory. Amen. And now let's look at let, let, we're gonna back it up one, one, one psalm now. We're gonna back up to Psalm 17. We're going to back up a couple of Psalms now. Psalm 17. Amen. And I want you to look at Psalm 17. And I want you to also look at verse number 7. Psalm 17 and verse number 7. And it says, Show thy mar marvelous. I got more light on this thing than I. It says, Show thou, show thy marvelous loving kindness. O thou that serveth, that saveth by thy right hand, them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes. Mm. Keep me as the apple oh, oh. of thine eye. Oh, yes. Hide me under the shadow of thy wing. You see what God is saying here? Glory to God. Yes. Amen. Amen. You see, we have something great going on for us when we begin to understand what God is saying concerning us. Amen. We are not just a, 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 a people, a fly-by-night people. We are a, a, a chosen generation. Amen. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation of, of people that have been called out of darkness. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. So I'm telling you, we have been given a position of authority like no other. Amen. Like no other. Hallelujah. No other generation. Uh, that have been, been other generations, but... How many, more, how many of you know that most people of the generation have come and gone did not come to the knowledge where we are today? Amen. So we're in a, a good time in life. Mm -hmm. We're in a good time in time. Yes, Lord. We're a good place in God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because we're not looking at ourselves. We're looking at Him. Because it's in Him that we live and move and have our being. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so when I see this, he says, show, he says show, show the wonder of thy great love. You who, you who save by your right hand, those who take refuge in you from their foes. I'm reading Psalm 17, 7 from another translation. You who saved by the, your power and authority. Amen. Now, the term right hand is not referring to a position of lo a location. But the power and authority is of God. Amen. Amen. We're not looking at a specific location here on this earth. But we're looking at the position in God. 
Because God is all powerful. God has all knowing. He's He's everywhere. He's He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. He's everything. Amen. Amen. He's the first and the last, the beginning, the end. He's the Alpha, the Omega. Everything that you can call him, that's him. Amen. That's him. Hallelujah. And so we see, in other words, you can read each passage that speaks of Jesus seated on the right hand of seated on, on, on the right hand of God. The, Jesus reigned with all the power and authority. As you know, he seated at the right hand of the power, seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. And he reigns. Now, 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 now notice. We reign with him in all power. We reign in him. In him we live and move and have our being. In him we live and move and have our being. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. So God is doing something right here. He's showing us some, some powerful information here. It's, see, in the Old Testament, the, the priest was not allowed at any time to sit at the holy place where the sacrificing was done. There was no place to sit. The reason for, for that is that their sacrificing was never uh, fashioned. Was never finished, I mean. Their sacrifice was never finished. The sin of the people were only punished ahead another year. Well, pushed ahead another year. Not punished, but pushed ahead another year. In other words, they never could get rid of that sin. It was always facing them. But the atonement, when they came to offer the sacrifice, it pushed their sin ahead of them. You know, that's, that's something. Yeah. And when Jesus came, he became the ultimate sacrifice, and he did away with the, oh, the burnt offerings. Now you just have to rent your heart. Hallelujah. That's what we... That's why we have to understand our position Amen. of knowing. We have to understand that position of knowing. When Jesus became our final sacrifice, he at the same time, being, at, being the high priest forever, sat down as God ending all sacrifice. Jesus Christ is the same time, Jesus at the same time, both was our sacrifice and our high priest. Jesus, when God brought, was bringing all this to a head, Jesus not only was our Lord, but he was our sacrifice and at the same time, our high priest. Amen. And he seated at the right hand. He seated at the right hand of God, the Father. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom, they, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Both Lord and Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And then we see, we're still looking here, and in Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 8, he said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, said the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Jesus said upon the throne, he is the one which is, which was, and which is to come. Glory to God. 
Revelation chapter 21, verse number 5 and 7, 5 through 7. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Glory to God. Glory. He shall be my son. Isaiah 44 verse 6. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. And besides me, there is no God. Uh -oh. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, all that we have to understand that we have been seated and caught up and seen together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We have been given authority. We have been given power over all the powers of the enemy. Let's take you and show you that right now. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. I'm going to close. Getting ready. We're closing. Amen. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. And it says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. That means I don't have no fear. I don't have to, I don't have to walk in fear. I don't have to allow doubt to overcome my understanding of what God has said to me. Because I'm seated at the right hand of the Father, and I'm standing, I'm seated in the position of authority and power. Hallelujah. Everything that Jesus is, I am. Amen. Mm. Everything that he wants me to be, I am. Amen. Everything that he says about me, I am. Mm. I am born of his blood. I've been washed in his blood and his word. Amen. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Because his word abideth in me. The words that I speak are not of my own. But they are the one who have called me, who have set me apart for this purpose and for this hour. God bless you. And I pray that you receive of this message today. But the spirit of God desire for you to receive. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you, Father, that this word will not return void, but it will accomplish that which you sent it out to do. God, you want the people to be aware of their, 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 of their, seating, of their seating arrangement, of their heavenly position, of their right-hand position. Father, I have made it known to them according to thy word. And God, I thank you, Father, that you will not allow this word to fall to the ground. But it will accomplish that which you sent it out to do. And you will be pleased when you see it working in the hearts of your people. I thank you for it, Father. And now, Lord, I bless your people. And Father, I know that we are in the last days and you are raising us up, Father, to reap this end time harvest for the kingdom of God. So, Father, help us to understand that we are to go to the nations of the world with the gospel. Knowing our position and are not allow fear to stop us from accomplishing our goal. We bless you and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Amen. Well, y'all get anything out of this tonight? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, I tell you, this was a uh, when I started studying this today, I said, I said, Lord, you talking about from the standpoint of, of from the position of knowing, from the position of knowing, so I had to, I had, I had to, I had, I had to begin to do a research on on that area. And I and I and then I, and I began to think. Position seated at the right hand. And that's when it started clicking. I said, oh, God, you, you give me. I said, that's it, Lord. That's it. Amen. And it started clicking. 
And God began to minister to my heart. Amen. 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 And so I knew as it would minister to my heart that he wanted me to minister to your heart. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you. We pray that the word of God will manifest in your hearts as God has sent it to you. And that you will benefit from the the note from the standpoint of knowing what God has already done for you. Amen. Well, let's go. We're gonna go ahead and take about evening offering now. We're gonna take about evening offering. Glory to your name, Father. The Bible said, when we give, it shall be given to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into our bosom. And with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. He that sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. He that so sparingly shall also reap sparingly, for God loveth the cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, and you always have an all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody give that one to give. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for this gift of love. We thank you, Father, for this, that your hand continue to rest upon our lives. And Father, as we hold this gift up before you, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this gift. And Father, we ask you to bless this gift. Bless this gift, Father, and let it multiply, Father. You know the work that you're calling me to do. And you know, Father, what I need to do the work that you're calling me to do. So, Father, I ask you, just like you multiplied that five loaves and two fish, I ask you, Father, to multiply this seed that is being sown today into your kingdom. Let it be more than enough to meet the need of this church, Father, and the ministry work that you called me to do. I give you glory and I give you praise. And I say this is blessed. Now, Father, I release my faith that the people are blessed. Financially, I call it supernatural finances into their lives, into their household. Supernatural finances into their household now in Jesus' name. Father, I call in bonus, raises, selling. I call in supernatural increase on the jobs in the name of Jesus. I call in miracle money, Father. Money they don't even know that's coming to them, Father. But God, you're releasing it now. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, for debt cancellation. Thank you, Father, for debt cancellation. In Jesus' name, we bless you now. And glory to your name, Father. We bless you. Amen, yes. amen, amen, and amen. You may be listening to us right now, and you say, Pastor, you really spoke to my heart. That message really spoke to my heart. And I want to be, I want to read, I want to give my heart to the Lord. Or you might say, I want to rededicate my heart to the Lord. Amen. I want you to just say this prayer with me right now. Whether you want to give your heart to the Lord for the first time. Or you want to rededicate your life to the Lord. Amen. Either way, God is telling you it's time to come home. It's time to make things right. Amen. You've been, you've been granted so much grace and God's mercy is sufficient. But listen, the Spirit of God will not strive with you always. So why put it off? Let's make it right today. Let's ask Jesus Christ to come into our heart fresh and new. And let's give our hearts to the Lord. Say it with me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit and renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sin. Because I believe that and confess it with my mouth, according to Romans chapter 10, I am saved. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you said that simple prayer right now, the angels in heaven are rejoicing with you, for you, and over you because of the decision you just made. And guess what? We love you here at New Life in Christ Jesus Church. If the Lord has done something special for your life, come on down and share it with us. Or just send us a, a note over the, over the, the internet. Go to my website, LarryMurphyMinistries.com and let me know what God has done in your life. Let me know if this message has been a blessing to you. Amen. 
and we're going to believe God, and we're going to just going to just continue to strengthen you through the word. God bless you. This is Pastor Larry. Thank you. And I want to have a special prayer request right now before we go any further. Elizabeth, Elizabeth needs special prayer? Come on, bring Elizabeth in. We're going to pray for Miss Elizabeth. And we're going to pray for Miss Elaine too. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Yes, yes. In the name of Jesus, I release your anointing right now, Father, yes, yes. to destroy yokes and lift burdens. I thank you for the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will rest upon their hearts and their minds. I thank you, Father, for divine health and healing. I thank you, Lord God, that no weapon formed against them prosper, Lord God. Whatever the enemy tried to do to, to cause them to doubt you, Father, I thank you that the spirit of faith is rising up on the inside of their hearts. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, touch and minister by the power of your spirit. And I give you glory and praise. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. She called me out to put a big grin on her face. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 Anyone else have a prayer request? Then let us all stand up. Let's prepare to go home. Okay. Father, we thank you for this time together in your word. We thank you, Father, for the anointing. Oh, God, we thank you for visiting us tonight. And now, Lord God, we ask you that you would strengthen us for this remainder of this week. And let us go through this week, Father, with a knowing on the inside of us that we are more than conquerors. And that we are seated at the right hand of you, Lord God. In a position of authority and power. Oh, Father, help us to understand that. Help us to get a revelation of that, Father that we will not allow fear or doubt to override our faith ever again. Yes, Lord. I thank you for it now. Yes, In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today here at New Life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. God bless you. We'll see you on next time. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I want to thank all of you for joining us today here at New Life in Christ Jesus Church where Jesus Christ is glorified. And I pray that this message touched your heart as well as it did ours here at the church. We are the children of the Most High God. Let us live like it. Let us walk in that authority and power that God has given us, knowing that we can overcome every act of the enemy. God bless you. This is Pastor Larry saying, be blessed. And remember, you're seated at the right hand of God in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Have a good day. Bye-bye. So we went to uh, visit him, and the Lord had me to lay hands on him right